And sometimes people misconstrue something about the political class. They think that we are enemies to ourselves and we don't even reach out. It will surprise you that sometimes the best counsel may come from the other side. Hmm. All right, then sometimes is the 5% rancor or 1% rancor that takes the media space. But a lot of the things we do in parliament, we read decisions by consensus. Committee level. Mm -hmm. A committee may meet for about two, three years. And there could be only one item out of the whole lot that would be degenerate mm. or become contentious. So if you work in an environment like that and you are, you are selected to lead, then you know that you cannot go one way mm -hmm. or try to be abrasive. I remember when I, 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 I got appointed. Some colleagues on the other side were asking what style I would adopt. I said, well, in the past, I was a number five, mm -hmm. defending the party, playing that defense. Now, I am the number nine, you know, a striker. You are supposed to score. A striker must manage himself, else he would be going with injury. Mm -hmm. And if you don't reach out, and the respect of even your opponent, you can't leave the house. Mm -hmm. So that burden is there to be able to manage and tolerate more. You cannot definitely behave like uh, a backbencher or a middle bencher or, you know, do some other thing. Mm -hmm. So it's a responsibility I'm sure I'm aware of and I'm determined to make so a difference, a not to disappoint the party and the government and my colleagues. Let's spare a few minutes to talk about the journey to what you've become now. Before we even look to the pressing matters on the table today. Become member of parliament for Ifutu. I mean, I listened to your speech. It was, it was quite profound about the difficult ex experience that you, that, you, that you had to go through from primaries in your party to contesting those who said you cannot lock down the seats for your party, the MPP, and, and being able to do it for this long to deputy majority leader and then to majority leader. How did this journey path out for you? And, and what's the learning for any young politician or young MP about how to persist to where you are now? Well, 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 like I said, life hasn't been that smooth. It's always been rough for me. And that faith is what has kept me going mm. and uh, as i indicated on that day i never saw this day coming that it would even happen all right because the journey of politics well i fell into it accidentally because some classmates led by my bosom friend uh, brother nana asante drew me into it when I was in final year, just preparing to go back to school uh, when school reopened. And he came to me in Accra at my residence and said, look, the NPP candidate had stepped down and that everybody is calling your name. At the time, I think I was a financial secretary of the party in the Futu. And when I came in, I managed to get almost all the police station chairpersons on my side. Eventually, not making it just a day to the filing some elders in Winneba said no way you are too young we won't accept you and soon thereafter a former chairman at Yubi Yangsin uh, spoke to me and asked me to contest assembly election which I did and uh, when I you know started campaigning the insults and all that I felt so depressed I gave up but again uh, some of my friends uh, picked up the forms and then got my picture scanned and they campaigned for me mm -hmm. and voted for me in absentia and I became assemblyman. I was brought in, I went to contest presiding member, which I won. Then um, after that, got a second term. But then again, 
2008, I lost primaries one vote after we had voted 22-22. Regional executive said, oh, the, my opponent was the, the MP then anyway, was a member of the constituency executive committee, so he had a right to vote, which he did. He voted for himself. And of course, he couldn't have voted for me. So 23-22, very painful. And we had to still keep going. The fact that even within the period, uh, Standard Chartered Bank considered me uh, as a PEP, politically exposed person, mm -hmm. because an officer has seen my assemblyman poster on a uh, Accra Winneba uh, uh, bus, mm -hmm. and they had to be downgrade my account to GSAM. And the difficulty affected my business and all. And I wasn't running an easy business, transport business. Transport business is a very difficult business to run. At the time, there were no tracking devices to be fixed on the trucks. So you have to be trailing your drivers, following them here, there. You know, accident upon accident. Got huge indebtedness because we had different banks financing us. And things were a bit rough. Mm -hmm. You were hauling from Awasu to uh, Takrade, transporting red oil from Côte d'Ivoire to Jos Plateau, uh, moving... Jos Plateau in Nigeria? Yes. There was a soap factory there. So we were, I had tankers. I brought in 52,000 liter capacity tankers from Konya. Konya is in Turkey. Mm. I brought them from there. I'm not sure this part of your life people know about. And then um, we cutting limestone from Tablibo mm -hmm. in uh, Togo yes. to Aplao and Bupe, mm -hmm. and then cutting uh, Klinka also from Takradi to Bupe, you know, and then hauling for Guinness, you know, their drinks, you know, distributing them for them. So I was, I was plus running a law firm. Yes, I was really into the logistics business. Um, doing so many things at the same time, failing succeeding things lo looking bad a day you could have about three four accidents and all so i've, I've had my own fair share of life's disappointment then eventually uh divinity smiled at me i won 2012 when nobody thought i could and like i said earlier it's only mr akman Uzajima. Mm -hmm. And Asabi, who came to Winneba then, because we needed an elderly face, a prominent face in a future. Because at the time I was contesting a cabinet minister, mm -hmm. so they were the only people who. That was my camera, no? Yes, who, who had uh, the time to come. And we, we never gave up. We kept campaigning with all the difficulties. And eventually we won. In opposition, we tried our best. We came into office 2017 with great expectation. I wanted to be in leadership, but I couldn't make it to the selection. I mean, I wasn't selected. That was okay. Ministerial positions? I've not been too keen on ministerial things. So I don't think I, I chased for ministerial Why? Things. Because of your transport background, legal background, no, no, there were positions that could no, be No, no, no. I've, I've always, I've, it's always been my, 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 my dream to work in parliament. I'm, I'm one of the People who believe that uh, a parliamentarian's work is in parliament. Mm -hmm. In fact, any time the opportunity comes, I will argue for full separation of powers in our constitution. Mm -hmm. I don't think, because our ministers are overburdened from 1992 to date, I don't think ministers, MPs are having it easy. It's not a, an easy job, mm -hmm. all right? I mean, it's really not. So I don't think I was real keen on being a minister. But again, I couldn't make it on the committee leadership too, because at least if you don't get a ministerial appointment and you're a senior member, you expect that you get deputy ranking mm -hmm. if you are on public account mm -hmm. or, you know, subsidiary legislation or ranking. Yeah. If other committees, once you are in government, you expect that at least chairman or vice chair. Mm. But I didn't make any of it. And here's the point. My genius, those who had come to parliament knew mm -hmm. 
first timers were chairpersons. We're getting those vice chairs, and I was above no rank working with them, but it was okay. How did you handle? And I went through Ecowas Parliament. Mm -hmm. That one too, there was a Bruhaha, and I was supposed to be eight, and we were nine because Honorable Pariansa felt slighted. So he decided not to step down. So he, was, he had his name there, and per the protocols, he needed to resign before. So we were nine, mm -hmm. and they said they couldn't swear at him. So I had to resign and come back home. Wow. And when I came back home, I was a bit expectant. I thought I could be honored with a committee chair, never to be. And then eventually, I was sent back to ECOWAS. My name got removed without notice. And I accepted it. Who removed it? I'm saying my name got removed. Okay. You know, uh, in other words, there were changes. Mm -hmm. And that changes affected me. Sure. And uh, some other persons That's were sent. It was okay. Um, in the process, it was not easy. Because it was like, why me? Why me? What's going on? But uh, there were some good counselors around who would talk to you. I think um, Honorable Kennedy Japan did a great job. I mean, when we met at the car park and mm -hmm. uh, we, we drove home and we discussed business and he decided to support me with some working capital to start some of my businesses again. And that was a changing, a life-changing experience. When was because, this? 2017, 2018? Yeah, 2017. So now I had to focus on the private sector again. Because look, in politics, you cannot be a crying baby. If it's your time, it's your time. If it's not your time, you your time. and all the odds are against you, yeah. you leave it and move on. All right? So I said, look, let's move on. And I think current Speaker of Parliament, who was then Second Deputy Speaker, mm -hmm. had occasion to... Talk to me. He will come into his office and share a few experiences with me. I will call. He said, look, in this case, for the eight years of Rollins' administration, mm -hmm. there was a backbencher. And then suddenly, uh, after they had lost, they were looking for somebody to lead. And he just emerged. So that was his own advice to me. And that was good. You know? So... With Kennedy's intervention and all, mm -hmm. um, I had to reset myself, get my law practice active, mm -hmm. run my business, do part-time lecturing, because I needed to do something to fill That's the space. Fine. So in opposition, I was lecturing at Zenit mm -hmm. University, teaching them law of trust. And then during that period of crisis, I took up appointment at GIJ. I was lecturing the graduate student okay. uh, contract negotiations. Mm -hmm. And so I was doing that, practicing my law and running my business and coming to parliament. Wow. So that I wouldn't, you know, escalate. Because one thing about going through some of these difficulties would be that if you are overthinking, you know, know what else to do. Because you, you have a family to manage, mm -hmm. you have yourself to manage, you have your constituent to manage. To manage. So you don't have to show. Because at a point... Constituency politics, the local politics. They would, the NDC guys will see my people, be teasing them, oh, your MP did not get a post, you know? Okay. So my focus then was to work hard, show presence in the constituency, mingle with them, live with them, touch base, do projects, and keep going. And, and I kept you this going. Is, this is what I want to tell the youth. Life has its own disappointment, but divinity... And the cosmic masters themselves have a way of conspiring to help you at, a, at your crossroads. And they have their own time. Because sometimes you keep praying, 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 you're asking yourself, why me? So you take it easy and get friends who can advise you and talk to you. Marquez mm. <laughs> will always say that, OBIM Rebesso. You know, when things are difficult, yeah. Mark would advise you and you know, tell you, take it easy, you know? So, I think my luck was that I could get people to rely on. My own uncle of blessed memory, Dan Market. Mm -hmm. I would go to him, spend time with him, and he would keep advising me that, take it easy, 
Take it easy. Take it easy. So, you don't make enemies. You don't get bitter. You manage situations, and that is where we are. Did I mean, you, did you did you ever get depressed? Um, depression in the sense of disappointment. Hmm. I mean, me, me, you. I had a cause to be disappointed. Did you have nights where you had to cry alone with your thoughts? Oh, cry in the literal sense yes. of crying. No. Break down. No, no, no. To cry, no. Ever. I, no, no, no. I won't cry. In that literal sense, no. But feel very sad because sometimes you may be on the bed and you look very quiet and madam will ask, honey, baby, are you okay? And I said, yeah, it's okay. Because you don't also want to show. Yeah. Uh -huh, and uh, you don't want you know her to feel that there's maybe something wrong but you embrace you embrace life the way it is you know when you know your first time in the in the lodge when you are being initiated mm -hmm. a question is asked in all difficulties and dangers in whom do you put your trust and you respond in god that's what it is our trust in God can do wonders. So, when it comes, you take it easy. And that is what I want to share. Capture. All those who have success stories today have gone through difficult times mm. before. If they had given up, perhaps they wouldn't be where they are. And I would want to share with young businessmen, young politicians, students, whatever, you, all of you and the difficulties will come but there's always a way okay and i expect more difficulties to come you're ready well not ready per se but they will come if they come i pray for strength divine strength to manage it so that i can boldly say i walk through the valley of the shadow of death and I didn't fear any evil mm. because God was with me and he is always with me. Okay. You can only do so with faith because when you are in the chamber, it's all prayer, prayer, prayer because you don't expect things to degenerate. The politics we're doing in Ghana, sometimes people get emotional, people get personal. Instead of we focusing on the issues, sometimes with the... Uh, coming in of social media mm. uh, people can shoot anything out there and you need to take it easy and manage because people may just be reading headlines somebody may go on TikTok and drop something in there and funny enough Ghanaians would always forward those negative things to you mm -hmm. and sometimes I ask myself ah, if somebody is insulting somebody why would you want to forward it to the person but they will do it. Mm -hmm. You'll be there and somebody will deliberately send you something and say, Oh, honorable, have you seen this? And you ask yourself, with respect, does this make sense at all? Because it would even add on to your depression. Yeah. But that is how the politics is. Your family will be attacked. Close friends will be attacked. You yourself, you become a subject of all manner of things. But you would have to separate yourself from all of that. And if focus. you don't, you would have serious difficulties. Okay. And I try. And when I have challenges, I try to seek assistance. Mm. Because you can't do it all by yourself. And if you try to do everything by yourself, you break down. How would you keep... Okay, before I even head to that, Deputy Majority Leader, how did that happen? Well, I think Deputy... Uh, after the 2020 elections, I think the godfathers of the region were lobbying for me to take up a ministerial appointment. Of the central region? Yes. And um, it was difficult for me because I didn't want to be a minister. So, it was one evening, then they were sending the names. So, I accosted the lead person and I said, look, I'm sorry, but I'm running my business. I have businesses I'm running. And I still want to do court. I love my advocacy on, in, in the courtroom. So this ministerial thing 
I'm sorry, I don't want it. That's after you accept that bought here for Ghana water. That's correct. Okay. And the the lead person was disappointed. Say, so, huh? You've done so well in the constituency. You gave us the highest vote for the presidential uh, thing, and we want to honor you. Why are you running away? So I think some other discussions came into play, mm -hmm. and I was told that okay, you see a very old leader, you go to parliament since that's what you want. I said yes, I don't mind, and my boss called me and said, oh. Uh, you are going to serve as a deputy leader. And then, the boss being the president? No, chairman. Chair yeah. He told me. And then um, I think it went through the party system. And the letter came to parliament. So I don't think that it was something that I pushed, pushed, pushed. I mean, uh, it came because, you know... The grandfathers of your region and made the party, that. That move you know, you know, there's always this balancing act that a fair representation of various yes. uh, uh, shades of opinion and region and all that. So, I think that's how it comes. That's out. how it came in. Yeah. And fast forward to now, majority leader. Was it something you asked for? No, it's not something you know. If you ask any of the ministers, mm -hmm. you it start. You know, this politics will start as a rumor. Okay, and so perhaps if it is so, you get called. Until you are called, you cannot assume anything. But the whisperings began, I remember. Uh, the well, way to the announcement. Well, the to the announcement. All, all manner of speculations came up when the ministerial reshuffle was, mm. you know, coming up. People would speculate. You would hear national officers calling for reshuffle and all and all. Yeah, so I think that's that's what really happened. So we are where we are. Okay, that's where we we'll go for our very first break. After the break, we'll talk about the business in the House of Parliament that he's been leading as majority leader. The anti-gay bill has got a lot of traction. The president this evening has spoken about it. We'll touch on that. And other matters that have prevailed. Still the nation address, health of the economy. Choice of running mate for both the NDC and the MPP. I would like to hear from the, from the majority leader on what kind of choice would spare decisions and consequences. We're back after the break. Stay with us.
Thanks for staying with us. You're watching State of Affairs here on GH1 Television. I am Franz Zabon. Tonight, our very special guest is the Majority Leader and the Member of Parliament for Ifutu, the Honorable Alexander Atokwamana Afanyo Markin. Um, in the last couple of weeks, the um, Human Sexual Rights and Family Values Bill has been passed. That's the anti-gay bill. It has, has been properly christened. Um, it's been passed by Parliament. You raised major concerns and some elements for amendments in the bill. Regardless of that, it's been passed. Today, we're learning from the President that he's become aware that of the passage of this bill. He, he does say, and I would like to quote him before I ask my question. He says, I'm aware that the last week's bipartisan passage by Parliament of the proper human sexual rights and Ghanaian family values bill on the private member's motion has raised considerable anxieties in certain quarters of the of the, the diplomatic community and amongst some friends of ghana that she may be turning her back on her hitherto enviable long-standing record on human rights observance and attachment to the rule of law i want to assure you that no such backsliding will be contemplated or occasioned i think it will serve little purpose to go at this stage into the details of the origin of the of this proposed law which is yet to reach my desk. But suffice it to say that I have learned that today a challenge has been mounted at the Supreme Court by a concerned citizen to the constitutionality of the proposed legislation. In the circumstances, it will be as well for all of us to hold our hands and await the decision of the court before any action is taken. The operation of the institutions of the Ghanaian state will determine the future, the future trajectory of the rule of law and human rights compliance in our country. I'll ask you directly, sir. You raise concerns about this bill. Fundamentally, does this law serve the best interests of Ghana? Well, aspect of the law, aspect of the law, in my view, must be looked at. And um, you see, in any legislation, the, the fundamental position taken would be what we call the object of the bill. Mm -hmm. The object set out what the legislators seek to achieve mm -hmm. for the greater good of the citizenry. So here we are. The proponents of the bill or the sponsors say that they want us to put in place uh, Ghanaian values family system and all in other words we don't want a man to marry a man we don't want a woman to marry a woman and i'm saying that all of us are in agreement that same-sex marriage is not acceptable it's incompatible with our Ghanaian family values mm. however however should a person engage in that what becomes of him or her if the object of the bill is to reform correct transform change the person's behavior in that direction and deter as well those who want to well deter add it should incarceration be the solution that is where we differ and i respectfully submit that considering the new sentencing regime as initiated by the judiciary and same reflecting in our laws like the 
the plea bargaining act mm -hmm. we passed recently, it would be inappropriate to enact a law that would introduce criminal uh, conviction, which conviction will lead to incarceration as the solution. You can you can get it, especially when our prisons, the conditions there create a fertile ground for that homosexuality to to fertilize. Is it already happening? Yes, from from the report we get from our prisons. It's a matter of fact. Mm. And I ask myself, did did the stakeholders who were pushing for this talk to the prison officers? I spoke to some prison officers. I spoke to a colleague who, 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 who is a retired prison officer. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Francis, the way this thing charged the atmosphere, a lot of the MPs were afraid to even express their view. They didn't want to talk. You recall what Mr. Speaker asked when at second reading, mm -hmm. who had any issue. Nobody could speak. But you did? No, not at the time. Okay. I, it wasn't unnecessary. Mm. I needed to speak at consideration. And when I raised the issue of secret ballot, it was actually a call by a lot of colleagues. Because normally at consideration, we use voice votes. Mm -hmm. So they wanted that should Mr. Speaker rule in my favor for a voice uh, for secret ballot, then they will come in and slot in their ballot. Because it's a major issue asking somebody to go to jail because of this. Leader, are you, are you suggesting to me that if this vote on the bill was not voice vote, but secret ballot, we may have seen a different outcome to this bill? I'm not suggesting. I'm stating so In fact, as a fact. I'm telling you so. That is what we don't have passed. It's not a suggestion. I'm telling you what it is. Because, you see, what's the first rule of nature? Preservation? Self-preservation, yes. It was a risk I took. And I said I really don't mind. Because, why? If a politician is always thinking about the next election, and is all looking at issues of conviction, that this is how I feel. I should express it and justify. Mm. I mean, that should be my bona fide, shouldn't it? So I would not want to, out of fear, say, oh, maybe a few people will say, mm, honorable vote against you. So that bill introducing criminal penalties, introducing jail term, will not help the cause of the bill. Because it's, it's already happening in our prisons. It will not help it. Final year, we're there at Insawum. I law school. Every, I don't know whether the system has changed now. But those days, every final year group would go to Insawum as part of our studies. And we had interviews there. They told us. All right? So, I don't think that we we'll achieve that purpose. What is the state of our prisons? And now, you, the journalist, Francis, I ask you a direct question. Be honest with me. Look me straight in the eye and be honest with me. This very bill, have you read it? I have. In full? I have. In full? I have. All right. What has been your position on the, on the aspect that seeks to question press freedom? Well, I know there were two amendments that were made to it. Which is? Subsequent to it, in terms of the freedom for us to express our thoughts on it editorially yeah. without any consequences. What, what amendment were made? What was the amendment? Friends, don't, don't go into areas that perhaps you've not paid attention to. What amendment did they make? And what have you done as a media house? Because your fundamental rights as enshrined in the Constitution, press freedom, which freedom got curtailed at a point with criminal libel and in 2001 Nana Kufado Attorney General as he then was led government decision to repeal it and we all celebrated that victory that when a media house airs 
A claim should lie in a civil action, not a criminal action. Do you realize that that criminal libel has been reintroduced? And I blame all you, all of you in the media. You've not even paid attention with respect. So you have in the bill mm -hmm. that somebody says that if we are oba now koshe be matadi and atadia etise oba madi ano wafum and say we can jail. Hey Francis, mm -hmm. if you go and express an editorial policy on matters of mm -hmm. same sex you have committed an offense i don't think even you guys paid attention to that provision in the bill so we are where we are because all of us had a certain level of fear i spoke to a very respected journalist in multimedia and i asked that osimesi you that i know I expect you to state a position on this matter. Let's interrogate. Let's debate this. He said, hmm, honorable. Is it that we have been gripped by fear on this matter? For fear of you Let me finish. Mm. He said, honorable. I saw a lesbian. No, I was a lesbian. No, I was a gay. I said, I am too young. Would you also say the same thing? GH1, have you really interrogated this bill? We have. Really? We've done an experiment on it. Oh, I don't think. We have. No, I don't I'll think. share the link with you. And, and did you do your critique? We did. What was your critique? We, we, we highlighted the gaps in this bill. What were the and gaps? The case for which I want okay, you to see, share. We would, we, would, we would explore this some more later. But the matter today is that the finance minister has indicated no, because, no, no, that there are economic Francis, consequences for Francis, this. Francis, also, the president has said Francis, the that reason why, the reason why I want to pin you the media is because you are the one disseminating. Yes. Okay. You need to get the full facts. Let's take a put away the finance ministry statement. They're all relevant today. I agree. I'm saying that for a moment. Mm -hmm. Let's do you, the media houses in Ghana. Have you put together a team on your own to interrogate so that you can now say, Look, this is what we see? Because some of the things in there. Are driven by emotions with the greatest respect and I am happy that the law as it is is being challenged being tested. or are about to be challenged mm. I am happy that is being challenged it's the only way we can settle it and bring give it a peaceful rest I've had a number of occasions where I had to challenge legislations at the Supreme Court and yes. in fact, I miss court on this occasion. If I were not a majority leader, I would have I would have run to court to deal with this matter. Because I really want to 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 make my point. At the end of the day, it is for the good of democracy. You get it? Mm -hmm. But I'm not there. I can only use my limited space as majority in, leader. in parliament mm -hmm. and the space I get in the media to express my view. Be that as it may, I pray that the advocates take their, 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 their advocacy to the court for our Supreme Court to have a say on this. Whether or not a person in such a situation must suffer um, incarceration. incarceration as a consequence of such action. What about the element to the reactions? US Embassy says, no, this is not right. The IMF says this can drill our IMF program. Already the president has said that once it's being challenged in court, he will await what the decision will be. But you could tell by his utterance that he's not in support of this bill in principle. No, don't, don't, don't take the wind out of his sail. Mm. Don't misread Mr. President. Of course, I, 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 I am inferring I, for what he said. No, but you don't have any art to find his mind's construction. Mm. So let's put that aside. He is a lawyer. And he believes in the rule of law. So when it gets to matters like these, he would want to be armed with the law. Mm. I don't want to go into what IMF has said or what um, uh, U.S. Embassy has said mm. or what the Ministry of Finance has said. Mm. What I want to underscore, in addition to all I've said tonight, earlier, mm. is that tolerance... It's part of our values as a people.
tolerance is part of our values as a people. And in our local settings, there are offenses that when people commit, they are given the opportunity to reform and families sit down and make sure that the person is not worse off. The situation we find ourselves would be making people worse off by jailing them. And because people fear that if I talk, I may be insulted. If you go to the comment section of so in social media, mm. people would say all manner of things and it will go viral and uh, you'll be trending for wrong reasons. You don't want to express your view. Well, for me, I believe that the law can only be good if it gives opportunity for the offenders to reform. Mm. I hold a view that I can only support the law if it allows for genuine reform, genuine correction, okay. genuine reintegration. And it's the reason why in my amendment, I introduced community service to replace incarceration. But that was not considered. Of course. And that is where, what I was, why I was telling you that colleagues were waiting for me to win the, the, the application I made for secret ballot mm. for, so that they could come in. But uh, they didn't have that opportunity. Mr. Speaker, he didn't even rule on it. He just let it slide. You know, because when I checked the records, I made that application three times. He didn't say no. Neither did he say yes. He did some other thing. I mean, it's part of it, so I understand. Okay. Um, I want us to talk a bit of politics before we end tonight. We've had quite a bit on your journey, the matter of this bill, and the questions therein. We are looking into 2024 being an election year. Um, there are indications already that the NDC's John Ramani Mahama will look to retain Professor Jinnano Upokwajman, who's from your region, our region, the, the central region, as running mate. What do you make of that ticket? And can that pose a challenge for your party's ambitions to break the eight? You're checking so, the Yes. So let's do some, some calculations here. I mean, I just want to do some analysis. In 2000, mm -hmm. NDC did Central and uh, Central Upper for East. Flag bearer. Central and yes. Upper East. Yes. 2004, mm -hmm. it is Central mm -hmm. and Northern, yes. the then Northern region. 2008, mm -hmm. it repeated Central, mm -hmm. Northern region. Yes. 2012, it was Central, Northern region. Mm -hmm. 2016. Well, 20, 20, 2012 was northern and central. Well, I'm, you take it. I'm not. I'm central northern region. It's the same thing. Yeah. Not central. Central north is the same. 2016. Mm -hmm. Same. Yes. 2020. Same. Mm -hmm. 2024. Same. So you realize that for since 2024 20, years, mm -hmm. NDC has not picked any candidate from it strongest hold the voter region yes it has completely ignored greater Accra in its choice of running mates and flag bearer and has stuck to central region even central region coastal central mm -hmm. and realize that all the people they've selected mm -hmm. are coming from the Ekunfi Cape Coast Elmina and Clay. Yes. So Central, they are concentrating on that small portion. Cape Coast, Elmina, Ekunfi, Abra, that's Enkle. Mm. And all those people are one and the same people. And the pushback, the, the danger area, the Asin area, the Aguna Enclave, Efutu, Ewutu Enclave, you know, apart from, I think, Aka. Yes. Who Aka was 96. 96. Again, no, was 92. 92. Yes, Aka was 92 and then with Rollins. Yes. With Rollins. Mm -hmm. Where Aka is com was coming from Ewutu, yes. Senya and Efutu. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying that for 24 years, they are focused 
Even if they lose, they still repeat it. So that's been their tradition. tradition. I mean, I don't know what goes into that calculation, but for them, that is their tradition. Whereas MPP, we've been going around, you know, um, for the first time, we have a Muslim leader like from, mm -hmm. from Northeast, and there's a call. I mean, if you listen to party people, they are talking about an Ashanti running mate. Mm -hmm. Others are talking about Eastern running mate. Mm -hmm. I've not heard Central. Uh, Do you want a Central? Do you want Central? It's not for me. The party has never chosen a Central. I'm saying that it's not for me yes. to say. I'm, we are making an analysis. analysis sure. yeah. We are oh, lately. I'm hearing of Great Accra, mm -hmm. and then there is also a call for a woman running mate. Mm. You know, so we are hearing names like uh, Honorable Natoshi, mm -hmm. uh, Honorable Eslowusu, the Chief of Staff, uh, Frima Opare. Uh, which other name am I hearing for the running mate? for women mm -hmm. yeah i think these are the prominent names that are coming up um of course i don't know she is a grand woman you know who is also people are making a strong case for her eslo usu uh, you know an mp for in greater Accra, mm -hmm. uh, who has uh an, eastern uh, root in eastern region ashanti region mm -hmm. and uh, she's seen as a very strong advocate mm -hmm. Worked for the party, from a distinguished professor at the you know university. Worked with international mm -hmm. NGOs. Current worked as an staff. MP. Mm -hmm. Currently, the chief of staff. People see, you know, people are pushing. Then, when it comes to the male nomination, the possible, mm -hmm. you know, it's starting from if you go to Eastern Region. I think the the prominent name emerging from Eastern Region. Is my respected friend Brian Achampo. Mm -hmm. It's coming up very strongly. Um, and then when you go to Ashanti, where a lot of them are coming from, mm -hmm. initially we're hearing my former boss Chey's name. Mm -hmm. uh, we also heard uh, Joe Weiss. Mm -hmm. um, Matthew Poku Prempe. Allow me to, allow me. I'll no, because of time, about... because I've just uh, okay. had to go through, yes. Oh, you don't have time, eh? We're almost done. Oh, okay. Mm. So. Lately, we are seeing uh, Napo and Edutum coming up strongly, mm. but I can see more of media projections, uh, media projecting uh, Napo the more. Mm. So, you are an old fox. Who will be the best running mate for Dr. Baumia? Well, these are matters for the flag bearer. True. I, but if you were to pick, I don't come. I don't come in, in any way. Your council won't matter? No. As leader? I don't have to. I don't have to be seen to be expressing a loud view on this. Should hey, don't forget. I, 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 I forgot this other name that has recently come up. Mm. Honorable Asabi. Asabi. Yes, you mentioned Central Region. Yes. Honorable Asabi's name has also come up strongly, mm. lately, that he combines Central and Ashanti. You know, he's yes. half from Kromantin yes. and uh, as in, uh, Asante Achim mm. there. So his name has also come up. Would you, yeah. would you back him for central reasons? No, no. What I'm saying is that names have come up. Mm -hmm. And once these names have come up, the flag bearer now has an opportunity to look at all of them and who can best how would you back it? it. Would you back Asabi? No, don't put me to... Individual. Leader, it's a direct question. No, no, no. Well, you know, I you won't are answer. a great of the central. No, region. You know, I won't answer any of said questions. Why? I'm not a flag bearer. Yes, I know you're not. But your views mean something. Yes, but what I'm saying is that I'm not a flag bearer. Yes. The process of selecting a running mate starts with the flag bearer mm -hmm. who initiates the process. And based on counsel from the party, and then he would come, which will be part. He would come mm -hmm. to the appropriate. Uh, organ of the party okay. to debate it and thereafter a decision will be reached what if you are snubbed as running mate no 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 i beg you <laughs> let, me, let me have a long life leader we're done i thank you for your time thank you and for joining us tonight thank you that's alexander
at Okram Nafanyo Market, the majority leader, and MP for a That'll be for us, and I hope you enjoyed the interview like we did. Thanks for your time. Good night.